Hello everyone, in order to learn any object oriented programming like C++, Java, C Sharp, we must know some basic concepts of objects and classes. So let's start this video and let's learn these concepts in detail. So let me introduce you with the objects and classes. Uh, in real world we all are surrounded by so many things around us like uh, book, uh, copy, pen, uh, vehicles we have and so many things uh, are there which may be tangible or intangible. So all these things uh, are called objects in real world. Every object belongs to a particular class or we can say every object is derived from a class. So in real world all the things are divided into a particular category and that category is called a class. Suppose we all are humans. So human beings they all belong to human class. Suppose uh, uh, students are there and they all belong to a student class. Suppose one uh, a vehicle is there like car. Take the example of a car. A car belongs to a car class. So in object oriented programming as we know this uh, OOPS programming is based on the real world problems. So we can solve any real world problem using object oriented programming. So in object oriented programming we can also categorize the things into classes and we can also represent the real life world in software objects. When a real life world object is represented in software terms that is called a software object and software objects represent a real life world object. Now let's take an example of classes and object. A class is just a template and using that template we can construct objects. Suppose you are going to build a house for you. So firstly you will go to the architecture. The architecture will create a template or the design for your house. So everything will be uh, settled in advance. The architecture will see which room will be uh, placed on which corner and what will be the outline of your house. And that is just a template, that is just a blueprint. Using that blueprint you will construct a house for you. And once the house is ready for you, it means that house is an object and the object is created using a template or a blueprint that template or that blueprint is called a class so now let's see in software terms what is an object an object is an identifiable entity it has some characteristics a state and behavior for example car pen student teacher etc all are object and these objects can be tangible or intangible Tangible objects are those objects which you can see or which you can touch in the real world. So everything that you can see or you can touch is called tangible. Other things that you cannot see, you cannot touch means the things which do not have physical existence. But they can be realized. Like air is there, air we can't see, air we can't touch, but still it is there. So these things are called intangible things. So object can be both tangible or intangible. Now let's see in detail an object has three things that is called its characteristics, state and behavior. So characteristics are the features of an object and these features distinguish one object from the other object. State of object is the information that is stored in the object and the behavior of the object is the functions that can be carried out on an object. So the functions that an object can perform is called its behavior. Characteristics it differentiate one object from the other because every object has its own features or its own characteristics which makes it different from the other object state it represents the data of an object 
So what are the set of values, set of data of an object that is called its state and behavior it represents the functionality of an object. So what an object can perform is its behavior. Let's take an example of a camera. So camera in real world is an object and camera belongs to a particular class that is called camera class. So in the real world there are so many cameras and all the cameras are different objects but they all belong to the camera class. Now every camera is different from the other camera. It means what makes it different from the other its characteristics because every camera has its own feature or its own characteristics. For example the lens used in camera may be different whereas the lens used in some other com camera may be different. Other characteristics can be image sensor that is used in the camera or the internal storage in which camera may have it may be different or the features like flashlight it is having or not or the quality of screen it is giving and the optical zoom that it can be achieved all these are the features of a camera next we will talk about its state so state of the camera can be the set of values that is stored for example camera is on or off that is its state and then we have the behavior of camera so a camera what functions it can perform is its behavior for example a camera can be used to take still pictures or it can be used to record a video or audio like that so all these are the functions which can be performed using camera so these are called its behavior next we will talk about a class what is a class so a class is a blueprint of objects that share common properties relationships and behaviors so we can say that a class defines a template or blueprint from which individual instances or objects are created so class is also called uh, objects factory or you can also call it as a user defined class why class is called object factory because objects are created using class if there is no class you can't create any object and class is also a user defined type because a class is created as per the requirements of the user every class consists of two things that is data members and member functions so data members are the fields or the variables in which the data is stored inside a class so member functions are the methods of the class which perform some functions in the class using the objects. Let's take an example of a book. A book is a class and using that class we can derive different objects like English book. It is also derived from the book class that is the first object. Hindi book it is also derived science book computer book all the books belongs to the book class so all these are the instances of same class here is an example how you can create a class in java the first is you have to use the class keyword followed by the class name class name should be a valid name without any space and the first letter of the class name you should keep it capital after this you have a set of curly braces that is called body of the class and inside the body we have variables and methods variables are the fields where you can store the data and methods are the functions which you can define inside a class for example here I have a class class name is lamp then <clears throat> we have a variable private boolean is on so this is the name of variable and here in book it is a uh, mistake 
boolean and edge on so there is a space in between because boolean is the data type then space must be there then is on is the name of a variable then we have public void turn on parenthesis so this is the method and it will give true value to is on variable so is on assignment true then there must be a semicolon next we have another method that is turn off so this method will assign is on variable with false value as the is on variable is a boolean type so a boolean variable can hold just two values that can be true or false so in lamp class we have is on variable and two methods we have that is turn on and turn off turn on will give is on true value and turn off will give is on a false value so this is the blueprint this is the template of a lamp class so this is called a class in java and using this class further we can derive the objects of lamp class and every object can has value of is on variable as true or false next concept is passing messages between objects because the objects actually they can share the information okay when you call the methods the methods are called using objects so inside the class we can call the function and the functions will be invoked or called using a objects so every object in can invoke any function of the class and with that the object can also pass the information with parameters so when when the information is passed to the functions using parameters that is called message passing between objects and in message passing there is a sending object that is called sender and one is the receiving object that is called a receiver and one is the message message is the information which you are passing to the method using parameter and the method which you are calling it will return a value to you that is called a return value so this whole mechanism is called message passing between objects suppose i am calling to the sum method so obj is the object dot is the operator and sum is the name of a function and i am passing here two values that is 2 comma 3 to the function so this is called method call i am calling to the sum function and passing information that is 2 and 3 as parameters so 2 and 3 are the parameters this is the message which i am passing to the sum function and sum function will be invoked and that function will return me a value that is 5 so this is called message passing using object next we will see how we can define a class in order to define a class as i already told you must use the class keyword followed by the class name class name should be a valid name and the first letter you must keep it capital as per the naming conventions of java next we have the area between the curly braces called class body inside the class body there can be constructors okay for initializing new objects there can be class fields or variables for storing the values and there are methods that implement the behavior of the class and its objects so methods are the functions uh, as we used in the lamp class is on was the variable and turn on and turn off were the methods of class that we used in the, that lamp class so next we have the syntax so in the syntax the first we have the ss specifier or the ss modifiers so there are four modifiers in java that is public private protected and default and these ss specifiers they specify the access to the class 
or the scope of class where the class can be used after the modifier you have the class keyword followed by the class name and within the curly braces you have the body of class and inside the body you have fields and methods of class so this is the way for defining a class in java for example public class student so public is this sn specifier public means this class can be used anywhere in the program class is the class keyword and student is the name of class followed by the curly braces and inside the curly braces you must specify the variables and methods of student class here we have four ss modifiers so ss modifiers are used to define the accessibility of a method or of a variable or of a class so as i already told you there are four ss specifier the first ss modifier is the public modifier public members are accessible by any other class so suppose if any member is having public modifiers that member can be used anywhere in the program so this is called public ss specifier next we have the private modifier and the private members can be used in the scope where they are declared so suppose a member is declared inside a method and that member is a private member and that uh, member can be used within that method only because it is a private so the members are accessible only within its own class so the members which are private inside class they can be used in the same class only and private members cannot be used outside the class in which they are declared third we have protected modifier protected members can be used by any class in the same package or by the sub class in other package only so the non sub classes in other packages they cannot use protected members so the members that are accessible by any sub class or other class in the same package and it can also be accessed outside the package but through inheritance only so other packages they can also use a protected member but only through inheritance it means in other packages only sub classes can use protected member so the rest classes which are non sub classes they can't use protected member in other packages so what is a package a package is a group of classes so suppose we have a class and other classes are there in the same package they all can use the protected members suppose there is a separate package so separate classes are there and out of those classes only the sub classes they can use the protected member and the other classes which are non sub classes they cannot use the protected member and last we have the default modifier in the absence of any modifier if you have not written public private or protected that is called default modifier and the default modifier it can be used in the same package only in the other packages you cannot use the default members so this these four are the ss modifiers in java so we can use these modifiers to control the visibility of members in the same class in other classes in same package or in other packages here i am showing you one chart and using this chart you can easily understand the modifiers and their impact on the visibility of data members so in this chart 
I have used four modifiers and there are two columns first is the same package and second column is for the other packages so the classes in the same package where tick is there it means that member can be used or that member is visible and if there is a cross it means that member is not visible so you can see this table and you can understand the modifiers and their effect on visibility of data members next we have how to declare member variables or fields so in java the fields or variables are categorized in following types the first is member variables so all the data members that are declared in a class are called member variables next we have class variables also known as static variables so the data members which are having static keyword before their data type they are called static variables so all the static variables they have the same value for all the objects so static keyword must be used before declaration and the static variables they can be assessed using class name or using object name means in both way they can be used static member can be used with class name and even with the object name so these are the two things that you must keep in mind that static members are those member which are declared using static keyword and the static members can be used using both class name and object name so static members they do not have different values for different objects so static member have a common value for all the objects next we have the instance variable instance variables are those variables which do not use static keyword before their declaration so instance variable have different value for different object suppose we have a student class and we created five object of that class first object is having roll number value 1 whereas second object of student class is having roll number value 2 whereas the third object may be having the roll number value as a 3 so we can see that the objects they are having different values okay for different object although the object are of same class so these members are called instance members so where every object is having different value for different uh, objects but if a school variable is there inside the student class and that is the static variable and the school name is sacred heart convent school and that variable will have a common value for all the students so all the students will have same school name of that class so this is called static variable so static variables have same or common value whereas the instance variable they have different value for different objects next we have the local variables so the variables which are defined within a block that block can be of a class that block can be of a method or anything else so the variables which are defined within a block and they are limited to that block only so that's why they are called local variables next we have parameters so the variables which are declared inside method declaration they are called parameters and parameters are used to send the information to the methods as i gave you example in the previous section where we called a sum method and we passed 2 and 3 as parameter so the variables which are receiving 2 and 3 they are called parameters of that method next we have how to declare a variable because before using any where uh, any variable it must be declared first so for declaration uh, you must use any of the ss modifier that is public private protected or default followed by the field type so eight primitive type 
and anyone you can use for declaring a variable and third is the field name or the variable name so these three things you must keep in mind for declaring variable next we have initializing the field initialization is the giving the first value or the starting value to the variable along with declaration is called initializing suppose we have a tank class and here we have a capacity variable data type is integer and this is a static variable and the ss modifier is public so capacity variable can be used anywhere because it is public static means this variable is a static variable and this has the capacity 10 for all the objects integer means the type of variable is integer and capacity is the name of a variable assignment operator followed by a value that is 10 and semicolon so we are giving an initial value to the capacity variable so we are initializing the capacity with 10 in the same way we have a private variable a private means this variable can be used within this class it is private boolean means it is the type of variable and full is the name of variable assignment false so this is the, uh, the, this is the initialization of full variable so full variable is initialized with false value so giving the starting value to any variable inside a class is called initializing the fields next we have how to define the methods inside a class so method can be defined while keeping in mind the following components first is the modifier for declaring method you can use any of the four modifiers but generally we use public modifier with the methods because methods are accessed outside the class that's why the methods should be public if the methods are private they cannot be called from outside the class so hence modifier you can use with the methods next we have the return type so what the method is returning that is its return type so if the method is returning integer value then int must be the return type if the method is returning a character value then char must be the return type but if the method is not returning any value in that case you must use void keyword if the method is not returning any value then method name so the method name must be the valid name and next is the parameter list parameter list is the list of arguments separated by comma which the method must be given while calling it so the parameters can be left empty if the method is not receiving any parameter last we have the method body so the area between the curly braces it may have some set of values the processing or the interpretation of the information which is done by the method it is done inside the method body so what is the function of the method what it is doing that is defined within its body within the area between curly braces here we have the syntax for defining a method first modifier then return type then method name then list of parameters that is optional and followed by the method body for example here we have student class public int roll number is the field public string name is the variable public string school is also variable public void display data this is the method public is the modifier void is the return type because the display data is not returning any value display data is the name of function followed by parameters so parameter list as you can see that the parentheses are empty and hence this method is not having any parameter then a set of curly braces is there and here we have three statements system.out.print roll number system.out.print name and system.out.print school so this is the work which is done by this method so display data will display the roll number name and the school of a student when it will be called next we have how to create an object once the class is ready class is created and inside the main method or in any other method you can declare 
an object or objects for the class and using those objects you can call to the any method within that class for declaring an object it has three parts first the class name you must know along with the object name then you must use new keyword for declaring object because new keyword is used to assign memory to the objects at runtime third we have a it uses to call a constructor so the last part of the method declaration is called a constructor so constructor is also a class method which is used to construct the objects with their default values the constructor should be of the same class okay and uh, see the example here we have student s1 so student is the name of class s1 is the name of object assignment operator then we have new keyword and third part is the student and set of parentheses that is the constructor part so constructor can be used to initialize the value so s1 object then we have the another example product class so product is the name of class one is the name of object new is the keyword product 25 and 95 is the initialization of the object using these two values so these are the three parts for declaring an object and this line you must keep in mind for declaring an object so firstly we must use class name followed by object name then assignment operator new keyword and class constructor so this is the way for declaring an object of any class So that's all in this video, thanks for watching and please like this video, share this video.